Hello, my name is Kendra Seymour, and I want to welcome you back to another Change the Year mini class on testing options for your home. Now, this is a series of classes designed to give you the most important information on a specific test in an easy to understand way. Now, in previous mini classes, we discussed, discussed air sampling and surface samples. Today, we're going to focus on one of the more popular dust tests, the ERMI. Now, if you're new to our mini class, you can expect each class to cover the strengths and limitations of the testing method because there are no perfect tests, how to perform the test, and how to read the results and more. Finally, if you haven't gone to changetheairfoundation.org, I want you to head on over there and sign up for our newsletter because at the end of this series, we're gonna be sending out a testing cheat sheet guide that is gold. And it's going out exclusively though to those on our newsletter. And I don't want you to miss out. So that said, I wanna welcome back Mark Levy, who's done an amazing job of taking mm -hmm. us through our previous mini classes. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here again with you today. Thank you. I, I love that we're talking about this today. This is becoming a more popular testing option. And of course, there are lots of questions that people have when something like this, you know, hits the mainstream market. So I'm just going to let you take it away. Okay. Let me set this up for us and uh, just give me one moment here and do the share. All right. Well, welcome to Testing 101, ERMI MSQPCR Sampling. So let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna to cover today. Uh, the DNA-based MSQPCR testing, the original ERMI, today's ERMI-like testing, what does the ERMI test, where to collect ERMI samples, strengths, limitations, when to uh, use an ERMI, reading an ERMI, and the ERMI score issues. MSQPCR is an acronym for Mold Specific Quantitative Polymerase Chain Reaction. It is actually a DNA-based type of uh, sampling methodology, which is the most sensitive form for detection and identification of the different types of molds and species of molds. Ideally, the, the beauty behind it is, is the fact that it is DNA-based. It enables us to... Uh, test down towards the species level, and it helps us with the concentration levels, which really depicts more of the more dominant molds that are, that are actually uh, in the environment. So ERMI is an example of MSQPCR. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the original ERMI was actually a recommendation by the Institute of Medicine's 2000 report, Damp Indoor Spaces. They were looking for a um, more accurate way to uh, really identify certain types of uh, microorganisms with DNA formatting and other types of technology. So the EPA actually developed ERMI, which is Environmental Relative Moldiness Index. It's a more straightforward way for them to have a sensitive form for detection and identification of different types of molds and species of molds and really give it a good solid way for really identifying not just the molds and species, but really to help with the types of molds and conditions of molds within the environment. It was a tool to help evaluate the potential risk of indoor mold growth and to give the associated health effects in terms of what could be going on with the occupants. The original ERMI was actually a sampling methodology. It was the utilization of a vacuum with a cassette, and you would actually collect dust from two different rooms, be it a family room, maybe a living room, as well as a bedroom, and the carpet from a three by six area within that room. It would then give you a, once it's analyzed, the uh, the ERMI score in terms of the relative molding, moldingness index of that particular home. Today, ERMI is a more of a like type of testing. In other words, we utilize different types of collection methods. And today, when you're doing a collection with ERMI, it's the collection of dust from different areas throughout the home in multiple rooms. For example, you're utilizing a Swiffer cloth or even a ERMI dust cassette. And let me give you an example of how that would uh, be utilized here. When doing ERMI sampling, there's two different types of sampling methods that you can use. One is with a Swiffer cloth, and you can see this would be ideal for collecting on horizontal surfaces, for example, on top, top of door jams, ceiling fans, even on baseboards. Then you have another option where you can use actually a cassette, and this is a cassette that attaches to the hose of a vacuum. This is where the hose would be attached to, and inside the cassette, is a mesh-like filter that you can see. 
and this is where all the dust gets collected. So once it's on the hose, then what you would do is that you would actually vacuum the areas of where the dust would be located. And both sampling methods, the ideal thing is to collect four, five milligrams of dust. I hope this has been helpful. So the ERMI basically provides data. And what we're looking for is really, uh, it provides the a panel of 36 molds that are broken up into two groups, group one being water damage molds and their species, and group one, or group two rather, being 10 molds that are more typically found in the outdoor environment. We're looking for really the, the, the type of uh, conditions of an environment. And what happens when you're dealing with uh, molds is that there's two sources of contamination. You have number one, the physical mold of the, uh, the physical growth of the mold itself. And then you have the secondary byproducts, which are the spores, the fragmentation, and these toxins that become airborne and they traverse through the air. And these are ultralight very small particles that are actually making its way throughout the home and eventually settling throughout in what we call dust reservoirs throughout the home. That's another source of contamination. And that's where the ERMI test comes in. It helps us through the collection of that dust really determine the full impact of that home by breaking it up into these two different types of groupings. When to use an ERMI? Ideally, when you want to use ERMI, it's really like an initial screen. It helps you determine the historical perspective of what could be going on within a home. If you have health-related issues, it can give you an understanding of the different types of molds and species of homes that are there. And it can actually help validate if there is the presence of certain molds that could be going on within a home. And also, more ideally, what you're being exposed to because it can give you an idea of different types of indicator molds for water damage. And it's ideal for if you have any type of legal issues to really look at the full impact of what's going on within that home as well. Where to collect ERMI samples? Ideally, where, where there actually happens to be dust. So for example, horizontal surfaces like the top of door jams, top of ceiling fans, uh, the top of appliances like TVs, refrigerators, behind furniture, even on your return vents are really ideal areas for where you want to collect the ERMI sample. There are strengths and it's really within number one, the DNA formatting itself because it's the most sensitive form for detection and identification of the different types of molds and species of molds that are there. Because of that, it can actually really help us identify not just the molds and species, but certain kind of molds that have the capabilities of producing maybe mycotoxins. It also has a quick uh, turnaround time as far as being able to be expedited. It provides a historical perspective of the different types of molds within the home. And the DNA uh, formatting really takes away the concern of samples being overloaded. Certain samples, for example, uh, air samples, even uh, various types of surface samples can actually be overshadowed by more dominant molds or even debris that happens to be in that particular uh, sample as well. There are some limitations that are there. Uh, it doesn't really identify where the source of the mold is located. It is a more expensive sampling method. And you can actually have prohibitors that could actually be in the dust. For example, if there's drywall dust or rust or even chemicals, it could actually corrupt the, uh, the results. The ERMI score as well could actually provide a false sense of security. So if you're only looking at the ERMI score, that could be something that could be of, a, of an issue. And we're going to give you some more details of that as we talk about this below. But reading the ERMI. The ERMI is actually a scoring mechanism that's broken up into two groups. You have group one, as you can see here, and you have group two. And what you do to calculate the ERMI score is you take the sum of group one logs uh, and subtract it from uh, the group two of the logs. That score that you're ideally looking for would be two or less. And in this particular uh, example, you can see that the ERMI score is a negative 1.2 which in essence is obviously less than a two. And it's showing that there is a low relative uh, moliness uh, index here. And really, there's really no need for further investigation. But if I was only looking at the score, 
this would be something that would be obviously uh, very beneficial in terms of what we're seeing here. However, as I get deeper into the results of this, there are some issues that are here. For example, the negative 1.2 ERMI score is really giving us a false sense of security. Why? Because as I get deeper into the identification of what I found in the group one uh, molds here, you can see that there were four molds that were detected that were above average of the 2007 study. There was a 2007 study that was actually done, which created the average mean per every single one of these particular types of molds and species that are there. And so there were four of those that were detected, and four of those were in high concentrations. You can see that there are some asterisks that are here, and Aspergillus unis was a thousand times higher than the average mean. You had Ketonium uh, glubosome, which was also actually a hundred times higher. You had Penicillium brevicompactin, which was tenfold, and uh, Penicillium crestosum, which was a hundredfold higher. So you can see that just by looking at the individual mold types, we're starting to uncover that there are certain types of issues and problems that are there. When I look at that, three out of the four, Ketonium gluvisome, as well as Penicillium brevicompactin and Penicillium uh, crestosum, actually produce a very potent mycotoxin that could be harmful to humans and animals. So these are things that we're now starting to really bring out of the report that we weren't seeing if we were just focused on the, um, the ERMI score. The other thing is that in the group two molds, when you see high concentrations of the different types of molds that are there, and you can see over here that there's asterisks that are here that shows that Aspergillus eustis was a hundred times higher. The mucor was also a hundred fold times higher. And the penicillium was also a hundred times higher. Those typically could be an indication that there's mold growth inside the home. So these are things that you really want to be able to decipher. So by only looking at the ERMI score, you could see that there's obviously a false sense of security that has been actually uh, given here. But by really focusing your attention on the individual types of molds and species that are there and really looking at the, the types of, of species and their capabilities really could give you a better indication of what's going on with your environment and what you're actually truly being exposed to. So when you're using the ERMI and you're properly using the ERMI, it actually could be a very powerful tool in terms of the types of information that it could be providing you. It can help actually help flush out various types of mold problems that otherwise have been missed. And if you want, uh, there is a, a more detailed article that we could actually uh, have you uh, resource for. It's called ERMI. It's not about the score. It gives you a really good detail of all the different types of uh, ways that you can really uh, utilize the ERMI and the uh, ways that you can look at the report and what it means. So with that in mind, any questions in terms of what we just covered today? No, thank you. Um, I love that ERMI is another tool that people can have in their toolbox. Um, and I, you have a saying about dust. I think you say dust is the enemy, right? That's exactly right. Yes. And it's amazing to think about, you know, what might be settling in our dust. That's it's just, a, it's a fascinating thing for me to think about. But I do have a, a question. There are lots of labs now where people can order an ERMI test from. And some of the directions on how to collect the test differ a little bit. For example, some labs will tell you not to collect from areas like the kitchen or the bathroom. And I know people have the question of, well, why wouldn't I want to collect from a kitchen or bathroom? Those are areas with a lot of moisture, higher humidity. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on collecting from bathrooms or kitchens. Yeah, I really think that uh, collecting from the, the kitchen area is really a very good idea. You want to be very careful where you collect from. The refrigerator area is one where it's a source where it actually can pull in the air because it has a motor that's inside the uh, system itself. That motor really pulls in the airflow. So it's actually pulling in. It's, cr it's really collecting and uh, really uh, starting to really give you a really sizable type of uh, dust reservoir that's there. And it can actually give you a good indication of what the historical perspective would be 
within uh, that particular home. And if you've ever had the ability, if you can, to pull back your refrigerator, look behind it, you can see all the dust that's there. And that is really a collection and historical perspective of what's going on. And I believe it's a, another area that you can use to really give you an assessment of what's been going on historically within the home. As far as the bathroom is concerned, the exhaust fans are another area where you can actually collect and pull from, and it's showing you what's been airborne. So anything that's in the exhaust is actually being pulled from the air, and it's being uh, actually a residual uh, type of uh, dust uh, is actually collecting on that particular exhaust. And that's a really good way for you to see what's being airborne as well. So yeah, I believe it's a really, those are two good uh, areas. It makes a whole lot of sense to be able to pull from those areas because it does give you a good sense of what's been going on historically within the home. And I have one follow-up question because as you know, testing and inspecting your home, it can get expensive. So sometimes I see people ask, okay, do I need one army per room? Do I need one army per floor, one per house? Can you help us understand that a little bit more if somebody was going to use this as a starting point at home? Yeah, I think at the end of the day that if you're using it as a starting point in the home, using it as a composite is really a very good way of understanding what's going on within your home because you're, in essence, looking to determine what the mold burden would be within your home. The more ermies that you do, the more expensive it's going to be. So at the end of the day, what is the objective? What are you trying to accomplish? If you're really trying to understand what the mold burden would be within the home, then I think that the collection of a composite throughout the home is a good starting point for you to really understand in terms of the different types of molds and species of molds that are in the home. Again, it's not giving us an indication of where the where these source areas are uh, residing, but it is giving us a sense of what the historical perspective of the different molds that are circulating throughout the home. As we look at the ermi and we look at the individual moles and species that are there, that's going to be very telling. That's going to give us an indication if there's been a history of problems in the home. And that will help you understand, do I need to take extra steps to bring in a inspection company to really help identify where those source areas may be? So one test can kind of give you that composite that we're looking for. One test really kind of gives you the mold burden within the home. And it's like I said, it's a good collection of the different types of uh, areas throughout the home. Certainly the, the larger the home, uh, it may be a little bit more difficult. At that time, if you have a very, very large home, maybe you might want to separate it uh, from maybe, for example, the upstairs versus the downstairs. That could be one way that you can do it so you can get a little bit of a different type of perspective of the variances of the two different areas of a home that may be a little bit larger. But typically, a home you're really trying to determine what the mold burden would be. And if you're an average size home, which could be, you know, anywhere between, you know, 1800 to 2,500 square feet, I think one composite sample would be ideal for you to collect to get a sense of what's going on historically within the home. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, my pleasure. And for everyone listening, uh, if you haven't already, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and be sure to like, follow and share. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.